my understanding is that this doesn't so much prove that Scott didn't do it, it just opens up other possibilities. Well, it opens up other possibilities, but also it comes on the heels of a hearing that was done, ordered by the California Supreme Court uh, at the same time that, or roughly the same time contemporaneously with reversing the death sentence. When they reversed the death sentence, they did it on the basis that the judge had used the wrong standard during jury selection. He basically excused any juror who was against the death penalty. And while that was, and at the time I was objecting and saying, judge, you can't do that. You have to ask one further question. Can you set aside that belief and still judge the case? Why is that important? Because normally people who are pro-death penalty are also pro-prosecution. So then there was a hearing that was done as the juror misconduct, along with uh, the juror that was nicknamed by the media Strawberry Shortcake. That judge denied the hearing, but it became apparent during that hearing, I think, that there was no there there when it came to the evidence. And I think that's probably what intrigued the Innocence Project. And um, frankly, to some degree, I'm gratified that after 20 years that uh, a third party's taken a look at something that I thought was a, an abomination uh, in the first place. You could go through what the purported evidence of the case was, and I could debunk it. Or you could say, well, he was fleeing from Mexico. And I could point out, no, he was actually on the I-5 heading for Canada in the direction of Canada going north. They could say, well, he had dyed his hair to hide. Say, no, he was doing that because he was trying to continue to work and he didn't want the media haunting him when he was a salesperson on the road. You could go through and say there was no forensic evidence in the uh, kitchen. You could debunk all of that. And ultimately what somebody would say to me, is, well, I don't care. I used to have a boyfriend that was just like him, and I could see where he would have done something like this. And so there was this idea that because of the cheating, that that made him guilty of murder. And there was never any compelling evidence that he was, that number one, that he was in any way connected with her disappearance, let alone her murder. I welcome this. I, I think it's about time that he get a fair shake and a new trial.